Finish them. Finish them. My name is Nikki Haley, I'll start a war and then you'll pay me Farming everything in sight, bowing each and every night Raytheon, Marathon Raytheon, Marathon, modern day is time Love my diamond rings, anything for bling Anything for bling, Yeah, that just happened. Uh, this public service announcement has been brought to you by absolutely no one, especially not Jack Nicholson, of course. But seriously, I made that just to expose Nikki Haley because she is the most pro-war, neocon, hawkish uh, candidate out of all of the ones that are running for president right now. And Vivek Ramaswamy has done us a tremendous favor by really shining a light on her. And I hope that crazy music video picks up even more steam and shines an even brighter light for the reasons you're about to see in this presentation here. And here is one clip from Vivek where he lays it out perfectly. Uh, it has a little background noise. I enhanced it with AI to get it better, but sorry if it's a little quiet still. I think Nikki Haley has foreign policy experience and it shows in her bank account. I think that it shows in her bank account to the tune of $8 million of monetizing government connections after her time in the UN, serving on the boards of Boeing, her family in a military contracting business. Heck, unprecedented as far as I know, somebody collecting corporate stock options while running a presidential campaign, it is sick. I do not want a president anywhere near the White House who is going to march us into World War III, as her rhetoric suggests, and I think she's disqualified for being president given both the personal conflicts of interest as well as, more importantly, the hawkish neoconservative vision that I worry is going to lead us to prolonged conflict and war. So now you see Nikki Haley got rich from defense contractors, and it appears that she owes them now. So what can she deliver to them now if she becomes president. Obviously, war for profits. And that's why I wanted to make this. Back in 1961, during his farewell address, President Eisenhower warned us about the military-industrial complex. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. And we as a nation have done nothing to address his concerns ever since. The last president to really stand up against the military-industrial complex was JFK. And, well, you know. Nikki Haley now is one of the faces of the military-industrial complex. She uses this really firm tone as if her way is the only way and anything less is weakness and you're pathetic if you go against her. But we cannot fall for that and I'm going to show you some evidence on why that is so dangerous for our nation right now. For instance, listen to her plan on the fentanyl crisis. If you don't know, most of it is made in China and shipped over to Mexico and then snuck through our southern border. Mexico's not being a good partner if they're letting the cartels get away with what they're getting away with. What we will do is we will make sure that we send in our special operations and we will take out the cartels, we'll take out their operations, we'll take out anything that's doing it. Now Haley's plan would destabilize not just the United States, but the entire world. First of all, Mexico's president came out back in March saying, we are not going to permit any foreign government to interfere in our territory, much less that a government's armed forces intervene. They have resisted U.S. intervention for years. They don't want U.S. forces there, and they see it as a threat to sovereignty. So what will Haley do to further destabilize things if her military so-called solution doesn't work out? Which, it certainly doesn't look like it's capable of working out right now. Now, on to China. This is the craziest part right here. By ending what she said was all normal trade relations until China stops sending fentanyl, that would put us on the fast track towards World War III. Our two economies are very intertwined right now, and we still have our militaries butting heads. Near collisions of ships and jets and you name it, there's been a lot of problems over the years. The trade between our nations is probably the single most important stabilizing factor that we have, and it appears Haley wants to end that. China's population makes ours look tiny, and they have more than a billion more people than the U.S., 
How could the Chinese government even find all the illegal fentanyl production operations? It's impossible to screen all the hidden fentanyl in all the shipping containers heading towards North America. Haley is asking for the impossible while creating the conditions for World War III if she becomes president and she's able to try this policy. And in the nuclear age, she's a major threat to not only the United States, but to the whole world. The best way to fight against war is to make sure that war hawks like Nikki Haley never make it anywhere near the White House. And that's why I made this ridiculous uh, intro video. Hopefully it'll pick up some steam and go pretty viral and spread the word. And uh, I hope Vivek Ramaswamy sees it. I think he'd get a kick out of it. <laughs> so if you agree with this message, please be sure to share this with your friends, your family, anybody who's politically active. Hopefully together we can keep this warmonger out of the White House. You know, peace is bad for business, but war is bad for America. Which side are you on? You already know what side I'm on. Memento Mori, peace out.